Welcome to Satisfactory! This is the uh, first episode of the Transition to Megabase series, which is the follow-up of my uh, Beginner to Megabase and also the uh, tutorial slash intro series. And this series is meant to be serving as a tutorial for how to go into the Megabase level of Satisfactory. Now, first of all, uh, I have completed all of the uh, hard drive uh, researches now, which means that I have every single recipe that is in the game. The ones that I got that are of any consequence would be the recycled plastic recipe. And also I got five more inventory slots from uh, the inflated pocket dimension, which you can get twice from hard drives, by the way. The rest of them, well, nah. But then again, I also said that about the uh, the recipe for uh, coated cable, which we are using for making cable. Now, in this episode, there are a few things that I want to, uh, to try to address. Um, the first and foremost thing that we want to take a look at is the current state of our factory. And the current state here is that I have a production floor down here, which is more or less making the um, the basic stuff. Where I have the more advanced production floor up there, where I have uh, crystal oscillators and uh, heavy encased industrial beams. Is that the name of them? Uh, I don't seem to have one of them. I need one of those stacks, actually. Uh, we also have a secondary construction floor or production floor here, which I did intend this to be temporary, but I'm not sure if I'll keep it as, uh, or if I will tear it down. Uh, if I tear it down, it won't be in the first episodes of this series, because all the products that are being made here are necessary for the uh, facilities up here, so they are kind of important for me. Uh, yeah, heavy modular frame, that's the thing. I'm not sure, but heavy encased, that doesn't sound right. So, um, for those of you who haven't been following my previous uh, series, I uh, do encourage you, unless this is the part you are uh, interested in watching, of course, I do encourage you to watch those episodes to see how I got to this point. But yeah, this part here, uh, this is the screw assembly. Uh, I am using far less of the iron ingots that is coming into this assembly uh, so that I have capacity to create more screws if I want to. But currently I am producing the number of screws that I need. Uh, the exact number of screws that I'm producing would be 300 from these facilities. I have that container in the middle, which is a bit... Uh, inconvenient I guess but no I'm making more than 300 I'm making 500 I'm sending off 200 of it to that part so the the, the other 300 I'm sending down uh, through the container where some of it goes to the central storage area which is those containers behind there and the rest of them goes to the production uh, where we follow the belt here and that is a mark 4 belt uh, here we're producing iron plates and I have four of these producing dedicated iron plates for our buffer, which probably is not necessary. Uh, and this buffer is just sending things down, because I have a system where everything that goes to the central storage facility goes underneath the floor here. So you can see the belt coming out there. And if we go over here, you can see many belts with various products going over to the other end of the factory. Then we get to this part of the factory. This is where I'm producing wire. And that wire is being used for um, uh, both buffers and also for making cable. But this specific wire here is being used for the buffer and also for making the rotors and stators where I'm using an alternate recipe for the uh, rotors, which is the steel rotor recipe. And the reason why I'm using that recipe is not because it's such a great recipe. It's it's okay, 
but it makes the rotor assembly much simpler as it then uses the exact same products as the stators, steel pipes and wires. Now, for iron plates, I am making a total of um, 320. I'm using 75 of that, if my spreadsheet is correct. Uh, for wire, I am making a total of uh, 600 uh, in this section here. Uh, there are 20 constructors here. I haven't counted the ones that are underneath the, uh, the um, advanced production floor. But these four machines are dedicated to those four refineries uh, which are making the coated cable. And through those refineries we are making a grand total of 216 cable of which we are currently using none. Uh, that cable was dedicated for the uh, phase 3 space elevator products uh, which required uh, quite a lot of them. But now we have a lot of cable in excess, but I do have plants which require cable, so I'm going to leave that here. Over here we are also making some copper sheets. I have six uh, constructors making that. We are going to need more copper sheets than uh, in our production line than just these six. But for now this has been enough for me to make pipes and hypertubes and the things that require copper sheets. Uh, I think we're using some of the copper sheets in a production chain somewhere, but I can't remember exactly which one. Um, then we have the rotor and stator assembly line, where two of these are just placeholders. So we have two... No, this is the stitched iron plate, sorry. So we're, here we're making the reinforced iron plates using the stitched iron plate recipe. So we're also using some wire for that. I, I completely forgot about that. So some of this is going to these four machines. And I have some placeholders here so that I can increase this to eight machines instead of four. And here is the rotor and stator assembly line where I have four machines on each side. And four of them making uh, the steel rotors and four of them making the stators, which I'm using the regular recipe for. These, of course, then connect to the motor assembly, and uh, four of those are enough to support two uh, machines making motors. I have two placeholders here as well. And then all of these three products, the motors, rotors and stators, are being taken down underneath the floor again, and then sent off to the central storage facility over there. Here we have four constructors. Uh, these constructors are making nothing currently because this is something that I'm working on, so we'll get back to that. But they are supposed to be an extension of this assembly line here. And this assembly line is responsible for making the steel pipe. Uh, we have currently 12 constructors, six on each side, making the steel pipe, and then I funnel it around. Um, so it's going from there and it takes a turn around the other side and comes back here. And it goes into this container here where some of it goes up to go back to the uh, rotor and stator assembly and the rest of it uh, goes down and then into the central storage facility which uh, all of my products are being sent there of course. This is the steel rod assembly. Uh, I have 10 constructors making 480 of the steel rods which is actually iron rods. Um, and I'm not using a single one of them, so I'm not sure why I have this many of it. But I guess we're going to need them at some point. Otherwise, I might scale it down. These machines are responsible for making the steel beams. So we have four machines making steel beams, uh, which means that we have a grand total of 60 steel beams being outputted. And we're using 48 of that currently in those two machines over there. Uh, we'll get back to them. I forgot to mention that we are producing... Uh, total of 240 steel pipe and we're using a hundred of that currently. Also we are producing 22.4 reinforced iron plates in the four assemblers making stitched iron plates and we're using 15 of those. Then here we have the encased industrial beam production and this is something that I I'm not sure if we're going to address it in this episode or the next one but this is something that we need to address because I'm going to switch this recipe into the alternate recipe where we are going to make encased steel pipes. 
as you can see, uh, this recipe takes 24 steel beams and 30 concrete per minute to create six encased industrial beams per minute. Whereas this machine, which is set to the alternate recipe, takes 28 steel pipes and 20 concrete per minute to create four parts. I intend to have five of these machines, so I might have to move this uh, segment here because I want to have 20 encased industrial uh, beams being made per minute. That's a good round number, and uh, we have the resources for it in the base, so yeah. I also forgot to uh, pay a visit to the uh, modular frame uh, construction line, which I believe would be there. So we have two machines making modular frames, and I'm using uh, an alternate recipe for that. It's the bolted frame recipe. The bolted frame recipe takes seven and a half reinforced iron plate per minute and 140 screws to create five of these per minute. So we are using the 280 screws that I mentioned earlier that we're using. They are being used here and we are creating 10 of the bolted frames per minute here. Some of those are being used in the production of the heavy modular frames. Uh, I think five. I don't remember exactly. Maybe it isn't. No, it, it actually I think it is ten. So we're using because I'm using the standard recipe. So we're using all ten of these. But since I don't use uh, many of neither the modular frame nor the uh, heavy modular frame, I don't feel that I needed to set up uh, a buffer production for these. Particularly since at the time I built this, I only had Mark III belts, and 280 screws is more than a Mark III belt can handle. But that 10, it seemed to work, even with the Mark III belt transporting 270 per minute. So those 10 seems to be okay-ish if you want two machines doing this using this specific alternate recipe. So that's the basic part of the base. Uh, I did mention the refineries, so that's good. Um, underneath there and up there, what we're making there is mostly reserved. I don't have the exact numbers because I haven't entered that into the spreadsheet yet. I need to do that. But basically what we're doing here is that we're making wire and we're making cable. That's the inefficient regular recipe for cable. Uh, and that we're making uh, stitched iron plates from and we're also making uh, circuit boards using the alternate silicone circuit board recipe which is a superior recipe to the basic one uh, you completely eliminate the need for uh, plastic uh, which is really good if you have access to ports so heavily recommended recipe and finally, we have the assemblers making the crystal computers, which is also an alternate recipe. It is not the best alternate recipe, but it is a simple way to start your computer production line without having to do the, the uh, whole shenanigans with the manufacturer, which is a quite complicated recipe to set up. And I happened to be lucky enough that I had two quartz out or quartz nodes close by to where I started uh, so I'm taking the quartz in uh, down here and I have sufficient amount of quartz with a little bit of overclocking I think out at the quartz mines they're not too far away they're behind that um, mesa that you can see over there uh, so I have sufficient to make both the silica and the raw quartz crystals no that's quartz crystals it's not raw quartz crystals um, and those quartz crystals are being funneled up to the elevator there and into these six machines that are making crystal oscillators. And that is the entirety of the factory currently. Uh, I do have some outposts here and there where we're making concrete and uh, of course the miners. We have the smelters. All of the smelters are currently placed underneath the base. So we have the smelting lines down here. Um, here we are smelting iron. We are smelting copper in this line. We are smelting more iron over here. And over there we're producing some concrete. Uh, we have some concrete being produced. You can barely spot it all the way over there. Uh, there's an iron node. There's a copper node. Uh, we have some coal nodes out here. 
Uh, this is the uh, the steel foundries. So I am using an alternate recipe for the steel. So we have 16 of the uh, smelters making iron ingots. And we also have coal belts coming into these 12 foundries that are making the solid steel ingot. Also one of the best recipes in the game. So we are getting a grand total of... Uh, three full Mark III belts of steel, which I believe would add up to 360, 480, 700, 700, 600. That doesn't make sense. 600, 720. Six times, six times 60 is 720. So yeah. That's about what we have currently. And, uh, I mean, the base is already quite large. Uh, oh yeah, I have this, uh, this is a non-automated thing. If I have leaves or uh, wood, I put them in here. This one for leaves, this one for wood. And that goes off to uh, two constructors making biomass from leaves and wood, which then again goes off to this one, which is making the uh, solid biofuel which ultimately we can convert that to liquid biofuel, I think, but I don't, I have never used that recipe. Can I make a refinery? No, I don't have the copper. That's okay. I don't really need to make a refinery currently. Need to clean up some of these chests as well. Okay. Now, one thing that is very important, it isn't really very important, you can do this by using long, long, long conveyor belts as well if you want to, but I would suggest that you use trains. So that's one of the things that we are going to uh, be relying heavily on in this um, in this transition. Uh, I'm going to build trains and I'm going to use train outposts. And I've taken the time to, um, to build the trains. Ah, I need computers. I've taken the time to build the trains in such a fashion that my... Uh, base has room for a lot of stations uh, and in addition to that there are I've built a, a two-lane system this is strictly not necessary at the current update level because in the current update level we do not have signals on the railroads uh, and there is no collision you can happily just stand in the middle of a train track and let a train drive straight through you and the game won't care um, I expect that to change at some point. Uh, I, I very much expect that to change at some point. So I've built this in such a fashion that when that changes, I can actually use this base as the foundation or, or basis for continuing uh, building and using this base as my tutorial base for, for future uh, episodes when new updates are released. Provided, of course, that uh, Coffee Stain Studios don't break things in such a severe manner with rebalancing recipes and all kinds of things. Uh, which might mean that I would have to start over again. But I actually enjoy starting over again. I, uh, I'm completely hooked on this game. It is one of the most fun games I've played in years and... Uh, I know that some of you are very happily playing both Factorio and Satisfactory, and while I do enjoy playing Factorio together with friends, I'm not that big of a fan playing it alone. Satisfactory, on the other hand, I... I don't know. I, I'm just of the opinion that Satisfactory, for me personally, is more fun. Whereas I know plenty of people who have the opposite uh, philosophy, and it's not a competition of which game is the best. Both games are really, really great. Um, so, but my hope is that everyone can enjoy both of the games because they provide unique challenges in, in different fashions. Like, Satisfactory has the, the verticality, which you don't have in Factorio, whereas Factorio has the, the massive, like a mega base in, inside, oh, whoa, I'm not, I didn't mean to go this way. So, Satisfactory don't have the massive megabases that you would get in, in Factorio. A megabase in Satisfactory would be really, really large in 
satisfactory. But if you compare that in just numbers of assemblers to Factorio, it would be pitiful. But that doesn't mean it's not a mega base because you can't really compare the two games in that that fashion. You can compare the mechanics because the mechanics are very similar. Also, these um, uh, track selectors uh, or switches, they, they, they are very unreliable, I found. Um, they don't behave consistently at all, so driving a train manually is not optimal. Oh, right, that's, that's a problematic segment. So, I guess we'll be starting with that. When you build trains or rails, there is something that is very important for you to remember. That is, if you're building a joint, like I have done here, you need to make sure that you can see one of these. Because if there is not one of these, as you can see there isn't one of these here, you don't have a connection. So, what we'll be doing here is removing the train, we'll be removing this line, and then we'll be removing this line. And I have a good reason for this. There's a, there's a build order to, to, the, uh, to the rails that is actually quite important. Now, let's connect these up and see if we get the switch. Nope, we did not get the switch, which probably means that this segment is the, uh, the problem. And we did not get a switch from that either. Well, obviously we wouldn't get a switch because I'm being uh, silly. Because there is nothing to switch there. There we go. Now we need to build this straight line going from here to here. And that should create a switch on both sides. And there we go. Now we have a switch on both sides and I need to change this switch again because if it's behaving somewhat consistently it should be that way. I guess this arrow is supposed to point at the track you're supposed to take when you're doing a train. But yes, since I did not have a switch there I was obviously quite unable to drive there. Now as long as there is no train collision you don't have to worry about a train coming and crashing into your current train so... There is that. So why am I driving out here? Well, I wanted to, to show you the foundation of how we're going to do the mega base. Let's remove the locomotive so I don't fall down because that would be very inconvenient at this time. So here we have a roundabout and I messed a lot around with this roundabout because getting a perfect circle roundabout, uh, that turns out to be not that simple. So you can see here that I have about the same distance here as I have... Yeah, you can see it's skewed there compared to this. No, this is also skewed. <laughs> this is the only one that is not skewed. So we are going to fix that. And thanks to my very good friend Wally, uh, which, which, that's the wrong word. Thanks to my very good friend Wally, who has created a great tutorial for this. I will now be making a proper um, roundabout with a perfect circle so that we can get that correct. And I will be using the same technique for all of my... Uh, railroads after or rather all of my roundabouts after uh, after this specific one so we'll be removing those and i just need to make sure that those are correct so the thing that i'm measuring with is the seams and this one looks right this one does not look right so there is a problem here as well and the problem here is that this one is placed wrong, while this one is not placed wrong either. Uh, we'll get back to that, actually. So, Wally is explaining this excellently in his short tutorial, which I highly encourage you to go uh, both watch and click like on to help Wally get visibility for that tutorial, because it's, it's really the first tutorial that is straight 
to the point, short, and explains this in the best fashion possible. So what I just did is that I found the seam here. Note that I'm on a 6x6 six six grid of foundations. So this is 6, and this is also 6. Wally does explain this better than I do in this uh, video. So I just place down a straight track segment like that. Then I make sure that it's on the seam, and I connect up a new track, and I go to the next middle seam. So this one is at the third and fourth foundation. That is the middle of the outer... Um, uh, the outermost foundations on this segment. And I made this thing here. Now what I need to do is to find the middle of this. Uh, that can be a bit difficult. You might want to use the lookout tower. But I happen to know that the middle of this happens to be here. So I put down a conveyor pole here. And that is the 45 degree angle. What I will do now is that I will go do the same at each of the four corners. Put down a conveyor pole to mark it. Strictly not necessary because I know that is the location now. But I'm doing this to show you. So the next thing that I will do then is remove this track again. And I will go back to my railroad uh, toolbar. And I will build the same segment of track and I'll drop it at the conveyor pole. If you look closely at the conveyor pole, you can see there's a tiny little white arrow there if you place it like I have. And that is exactly where you want the track to intersect with. So there we go. Now I take that and I want to build it over here. But that doesn't work, as you can see. So what do I have to do then? Well, it's simple. And this was the part that got me confused because I, had, I didn't even think of this as a, as a possibility. You build a straight track at the seam. Make sure it's straight. It needs to be centered on the foundation. There needs to be exactly the same amount of space on each side. And then you connect this to there. And there you have... Now you have a perfect 90 degree curve, as was intended to get a perfect circle. Then we can just remove that segment of track. And we can do this again. Again, make sure that you're dropping the railroad at the little white marker on the conveyor pole. Find the middle foundation here and do the same thing over again. You put the railway track down at the middle of the foundation at the seam. Build a little straight uh, segment of track, make sure that it's correct. And then connect up to that. And rinse and repeat while going around the circle. Like so. We can remove the uh, railway track there. Find the middle of the seam here. And... You do this, connect that up, remove this, and then it's just a matter of connecting this to that and that. And the result of this is, of course, thanks to Wally's uh, fiddling and experimenting, we now have a perfect circle. You can see there, you can see there, you can see here and finally you can see here where I'm using glass foundations which I need to remove that it is exactly the same for all of them. Now I want to have very specific track lengths on this segment and I don't think that it will become the correct track length but if it becomes the correct track length no it doesn't. So what I want to do then is just create a temporary, we can go out three foundations, we want to create a temporary uh, railway track, it needs to be centered and put it on the seam. And we pull that to where we want the, um, the track to end, which is on the middle of this foundation. And why the middle? Because each railroad segment track can only be 12 and a half foundation in length. So that is a very important thing to remember. Three and uh, twelve and a half. So we do the same here to the middle of the foundation. Building railroads can be a bit finicky. Now it doesn't matter if you start from the 
segment in here but what is important when you place down the rails is that you make sure that you're on the correct side so this is the correct side but if i that's not the correct side if i try to connect that up we'll get all kinds of issues because it's too sharp of a turn but you just connect that up make sure that you can see the switch because that means it's working then we connect this up again the switch and rinse and repeat now i'm not going to do this on all of the sides currently because there really is no need uh, but i want to try to fix this problem that i had here and I, fixing that problem should not really be much of an issue because what I need to do is just make sure that this railroad track... Uh, ah, I have issues with this turn here. And the issue is very simple. I need to end at the seam. So we have to go all the way back here and end it at the seam. And when we do that, this should stop at the seam. Yes, good. So this one needs to end at the seam as well. And then this one should go here to this seam and there that, that looks already much better and we need a track length of two and then we can connect that up to the roundabout there we go much better and i have to rinse and repeat on the other side here of course now some of you might be curious why I spent so much time in this first episode on something as mundane as this, but railroads is an integral part, I feel, of building a proper megabase. And I want to make sure that railroads are, oh, sorry, are properly understood so that people can build railroads if you want to do the foundation thing, of course, because not everyone wants to bother with the foundations. And whatever you prefer, please build the way you prefer because this kind of structure and neatness it takes time and you might not want to spend the time investment you might just want to follow the landscape i don't recommend doing that in the dune desert because um well <laughs> the dunes are <laughs> very much up and down um so especially if you're into motion sickness kind of thing, if you get motion sick, uh, building a railroad following the terrain in the dune desert is something that I really do not recommend. But there are many areas of the game where you can happily build uh, a railroad. Now why is it stopping there? That doesn't even make sense. Well, there isn't a switch there, so that's... But why could the other train go there? Okay, let's fix it. Um, where was I? Yeah, so the thing with the with the dune desert is that um, when you go a lot of up and down into the landscape, I can tolerate driving a car in the dune desert because the jumping over the dunes, that doesn't really bother me in terms of motion sickness. But the... Um, I think that should go straight ahead. I have no idea. The, uh, the trains would be going up and down up and down up and down and that would cause motion sickness for me if i were driving a train and as you can see these these switches are really not at all uh, in any way consistent and the next time i drive here i probably have to go to change the switch again so i hope they fix that uh, of course they will fix it but i also look forward to when they have the uh train signals implemented so the reason why the trains are separated or the train tracks are separated this much down here as opposed to up on the uh, the roundabout where i have them side by side is because of the stations in between uh, as you can see i've built the station system with having a station and four cargo platforms whatever whether it's freight or uh, fluid is not really relevant uh, it takes the same amount of space anyways uh, I only have one outpost currently. That outpost is producing Caterium wire or quick wire, as some call it. And let's take that. Uh, the, the the thing here is that something that I noticed is that since I only have one car on that train, this is the MB for main base Caterium wire. I don't know why I haven't called it quick wire. Probably someone has been amused by that. But one thing that I did 
think of that is a possibility is to, if I have another outpost making one specific item, I could just put two cars on it and make sure that the first car doesn't fill with anything and that the second car is being filled by something. Now, that could cause some very interesting glitches in the current version of the game because since there is no signaling and the trains do not collide it basically means you can have two trains on the platform at once or in the case of what i'm thinking four trains on the platform at once if you the stars are aligned or something but that is a way to to use uh, less stations and I've planned for a lot of stations here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to build this many stations, but I've planned for a lot of them. Every single one of those foundations sticking out is the marker of where another station can go, and I think I had like 15 of them or something. So, yeah, we're going to use a lot of trains. But, let's drive into the power pole. <laughs> That's always fun. Makes for some amusing uh, distractions and uh, different experiences. No, what I was uh, going to say is, but let's go have a look at one of the uh, production chain diff uh, changes that I want to make. Let's park the uh, car here. We have the sulfur outpost, which is not far enough away that I'm going to bother with the train. Um, at the Sulphur Outpost, we are currently making gunpowder, or black powder. I'm using the basic recipe for this, so we're using 7.5 coal and 15 sulphur per minute to make 7.5 black powder per minute. Now, what I want to do here is literally just tear everything down. Do I have enough space? Yes, I do. So we're going to just tear everything down because I'm going to change this completely. See, there, 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 because I also want to cut off the belts. Uh, that takes a certain amount of space. Let's remove all of these. We don't need them. We don't want them. I'm going to rebuild them, but probably not in the same uh, distance between them. Remove these, and we get a crate because my inventory is full. Can I do a sort? No, I cannot. Uh, awesome sink, hello, I need you, and I also need a container, hello, there you are, and we need to go to bell type 4, so this is done as quickly as possible, we also need a little power line connecting to that, and let's see, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need the sulfur, I definitely don't need the coal, we can get rid of a couple of these, that one, that one, that one, the black powder, I'm going to keep. I don't need that. And I don't need that. There we go. That saves some inventory space. Uh, and I don't need the sulfur or this one additional stack of concrete. So, I need to make sure that I have a line here. And I want that line to be aligned with that specific conveyor pole there. Now I should get a... Uh, yep, good. I need the um, snap line. So, I need to build eight assemblers. I don't know if I have enough room for eight assemblers in a line here. I'm pretty sure I do not. But I do have enough room to build them back to back. But of course that means we have to wait for this to finish. Um, so while we do that, I will pause the recording and return shortly. There we go. And I also noticed the very funny uh, model number of the awesome sink. I crush 500. Excellent name for a... Uh, Oh, I, I don't mean to deconstruct the... Uh, there we go. Uh, so these power poles, they might have to be moved. Uh, so building them back to back, that's going to be interesting in terms of the sulfur. 
Um, I might have to move the sulfur up because I need to take that around. Let's see here. Uh, I don't really need to be able to walk around. Another thing I could do, though, is to take foundations out from here. As you have noticed, I am protecting the river, which means that I don't want to build uh, on the river. I don't want to have foundations in the river uh, as much as possible. I can tolerate little things like that, but I, I, I actually go out of my way to avoid putting foundations to cover up the river because it gives a very nice um, break from all of the foundations and factory buildings and so forth. But I think we can try to see if we can fit... Because we need eight of them. Let's see if we can fit eight of them. We need the room for the belt to go around. That should suffice. That will probably cause clipping. Let's do it there. One, two, three, and four. That leaves sufficient room on both sides, so that might work. That might very well work, actually, because then I can take the the coal in this way, and I can take the sulfur in the other way. Yeah, that, that's actually quite good. I'm happy with that. Uh, so the coal is going to come in this side. Uh, we need to go two way. Let's just double check. Yep, that works. Uh, and that was on... One, two, three, so we need to build four in a stack here. And I'll just build the other ones as well. For the sulfur coming in on the other side. One, two, three, and then correct way. And again, correct way on the fourth one. Now, oh, that's not the one that I'm building now. Get back to that later. Uh, so there. And four. Okay, now the sulfur is coming in on level two, which means three. I don't think that's a problem, actually. It's very unlikely that I'm going to drive on top of this platform, because I can just drive underneath it, following the river, if I'm going to drive a car here. That's that's actually fine. Let's build those. That's wrong. There we go. And now we need to make sure that we... This is always a little finigly for me because... The opening is here. So we want to go two out and two back. And we need to do the same on the other side. Two out, turn it around, and two back. And this one needs to go to height three. And this one needs to go to height two. And the power poles will work, actually. And then we need to place down the assemblers on the other side. And that's going to be a little bit challenging because I need it to be the correct distance from the splitters while also getting the snap line from the other assembler. That's not right. I think this is correct. But I, I suspect that that is too close. That does not look... Oh, it is correct. Is that too close? No, no. It's perfect. That doesn't always work, by the way. Uh, sometimes you have to go one further step away on the other side. Um, I'm not sure what triggers that. Okay, there we go. Now we have eight assemblers here. And what we're going to produce here is... Of course, it has to be all the way down here. Compacted coal. 
Now, if you don't want to scroll, you can just do this. Boop, 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 ding. Um, but you have to... No. Oh! That's very handy. It remembers per machine. So there's a new tip. I didn't know that. that oh, that is so much simpler. I'm looking forward to the day when we can copy and paste things from uh, from the uh, machines. That would be very helpful. Okay, now let's remove this again. Uh, for the coal, I need to stretch this belt one further. Because it is not really... Uh, necessary to have an additional found, uh, stackable conveyor pole here. And we don't need that, I think. Nope, we don't. Because if you have two of them spaced apart with one conveyor pole, and then you have another one at any angle, you can just do... Uh, this is a 90 degree turn, and that is a 90 degree turn, degree turn, so you don't have to put stackable conveyors here and here you can just do a direct connection which is also helpful if you want things to look as neat as possible of course for this one we have to follow this very carefully and just make sure that we get this on the correct angle and if oh my now that is that is just pure luck actually because that means i can just do a turn here i can actually remove the entirety of this thing including that and i need a mark 3 belt i think this is 240 yeah i need mark 3 belts so we'll just connect that to there and i don't see the need for these either so we'll remove those and this one is no longer needed so let's deconstruct it then uh one two three four five six seven okay so we need an additional uh, conveyor somewhere. I think I want to build it all the way over here. Is that too far away to connect up directly to that? No, it isn't. We can remove these. And then we can connect these two together. And then it's time to remove the splitters that we have used to get to the correct height there we go and now we need to connect the belts like so let's jump up here that's probably a little bit easier and there is a pixel there I saw it there we go and there and then we need to connect this to there and not that one that one goes to that one and then this one goes to that one and i think i want to place down the power poles no i want to place down the lifts first now you can't start from the top you need to start from the bottom so let's do the lift connections one by one. Do note that the compacted coal is not a basic recipe. The compacted coal recipe you can only get from hard drives uh, and it is a, an important recipe to get. So that's a recipe you should prioritize if you get it as an option when you research hard drives. Uh, there are some recipes that I would prioritize above it, but not many, because it's such an important recipe at this stage of the game. Okay, so now we have the machines connected up with both coal and sulfur, so it's time to down the power poles. And we want the power pole to be here. No, that's, that's wrong. There. Uh, no, I actually don't want it there. I want it on this angle. So, here. Then we need to connect or build the power poles that will connect up to the machines. 
and I like to use one power pole per machine. Um, some people prefer to use Mark II power poles. Okay, so I'm encroaching the clearance of that belt, but that's fine. I'll just cheat and put that out of the grid, which makes that one even more important because this one would not be proper in the grid. Um, some like to use... Um, why can I not connect? Oh, right. That's why they are already connected. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is... I I'm a little bit tired today. There we go. Some like to use uh, Mark II or even Mark III power poles and don't mind the, uh, the um, power line uh, tentacliness or spaghetti, whatever you want to call it. Um, while I don't mind tentacliness, that is, after all, one of my trademarks, uh, I do like the machines to be uh, structured in neat patterns, and that also includes the power lines. And really, this costs three wire, one iron rod, one concrete. It's not like you're wasting resources by placing a Mark I power pole at every machine. But that's my preferred fashion of building, and I think it looks neater. But you do whatever you feel is best, because that is what these kinds of games are all about. And it's also very important to allow yourself to use your creativity to build in such a way that you are happy with your factory. That is... I, I can't even begin to stress how important I think that is. You need to be happy with your factory. That is the penultimate goal of Satisfactory. That you have fun, that you do things in a manner that makes you satisfied in a satisfactory manner. Haha, <laughs> pun made. Okay, let's wrap up this episode. I have the uh, compacted coal uh, being produced. I am using 200 coal and 200 sulfur for this, so I have 40 coal and 40 sulfur to, uh, to spare on, on the belts. This one isn't getting any coal. Why? What is the reason for the coal not coming into the machines? None of them are getting any coal. Have I done something wrong here? Did I remove a belt I shouldn't remove? This needs to be investigated. There is no reason why I shouldn't get any coal. Did I disconnect a power line somewhere? Uh, can I build a lookout tower? I'm not going to dismantle, I'm going to build a lookout tower. That's probably too far away, but let's try it. There is no coal coming in on that line. Why? There's a radioactive thing here, by the way. Oh, need to be a bit careful. There it is. What have I done now? The coal was working earlier. Oh, I think I remember. I, I went out there and upgraded the coal mine. And since I haven't been producing much black powder... I probably didn't connect up the power when I upgraded the mine to Mark II. That's probably the issue here. But while I walk out there to connect up the power, um, the roundabout thing that I showed earlier, I just want to make sure that Wally is properly thanked for that, because Wally spent uh, time doing that for me because I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I'm very, very grateful for that. There we go. And I will be uh, linking his uh, tutorial in... I hope I can do it in an info card. I believe I can. Uh, but I will also be linking it in the description. And I do encourage you to go watch the tutorial. Um, and please leave a like on it, uh, because he spent time doing that just for 
my sake and it also helps all of you who want to have uh, perfect circle roundabouts to have the neatest possible way of building your railways so it's a great tutorial now if you do have any questions or comments uh, I would be very welcoming in them that sounded very weird I'm <laughs> If you have any questions or comments, I welcome them in the comment section of this video uh, and I will try to respond to any questions uh, and or comments that you might have, of course. Or you can come join us in the Discord server. You will find the link to that in the description of the video as well. For now, I hope that you are going to enjoy this uh, Transition to Megabase uh, series where we are going to... Uh, seriously ramp up the production of stuff in uh, Satisfactory. So thank you all so much for joining me and I will be seeing you all in the next episode.